I want to respond to a guest on a recent PBD podcast who said bad things about the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He deceptively misrepresented the events that he was talking about. I'm going to put them into their context and show you how they're completely different from what he said. He also commits a logical fallacy, but it'll take a while to explain that. So I'm going to put that in a separate response video. Make sure that you subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss that video. Let's start by listening to what he has to say, and then I'll respond. He raided a Jewish tribe. He killed the whole family of a newly bride called Safiya. And he took her as a wife the same time he was returning to Medina. Would you put that as a role model for me today in the 21st century? There's three issues here. The first is that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, raided a Jewish tribe. But he doesn't tell us anything about this Jewish tribe. Who were they? And why was the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, attacking them? This was the Jewish tribe of the Lady Safiya, the blessed wife of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم. Her family, her father, for example, were leaders of their tribes. And they used to live side by side with the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, in the city of Medina. And they'd made peace treaties with the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and his followers. And they'd broken those peace treaties and actively tried to kill him and attack the followers of the Prophet this is an act of treason. It's an act of war. It's the greatest act of war because it's done while living side by side with someone and you are pretending, you're giving the false impression that you're on their side. Any country in the world, even today, would have enacted a capital punishment on that leader for doing this. But the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, forgave him. He let him go. But her father, who was an influential and important person, went to another city and started making plans to attack the Prophet وسلم, and his followers in Medina. He gathered tribes from all over the Arabian Peninsula. And they came and they surrounded the city of Medina. They besieged it. And everyone who was watching thought that this was the end of the Muslims. It's the end of the Prophet And at this critical juncture, he even went into Medina and convinced one of his fellow tribes to be treacherous and break their peace treaties just as he had broken his own. They all failed. The Prophet Muhammad and his followers were saved, and he was captured. At this point, he could have asked for forgiveness. He could have promised that he would mend his ways. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, would have forgiven him. He was known for that. There's so many examples of that from his life. But at this point, on his way to being executed, he said, I don't regret anything. That's why he was executed. The Prophet وسلم, and the Muslims had no other choice. This was a man who committed treason. He treacherously waged war. He was forgiven for it. Then he did it again, incited other people to commit treason, and he just wasn't stopping. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was known to forgive people, even when they were treacherous against him, even when they tried to kill him. There's so many incidents about that from his life. And he didn't wage war except when he had no other choice. That's why immediately after these events, he gathered an army and he went and he attacked these Jewish tribes that our guest mentions. The Prophet وسلم, and his followers who are going to attack these tribes, they are fewer in number, they're less well equipped, and they are attacking a group of people who are sitting in luxury in the best fortresses in Arabia. Why are they doing this? Because they have no other choice. Allah gave the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and the Muslims success. But what happened after their victory? What happened after these Jewish tribes who had been treacherous, incited others to treachery, 
and brought the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and the Muslims and Islam to the brink of extinction, what happened? They asked for peace and forgiveness. And the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, let them go. They stayed in their homes. The Prophet وسلم, forgave them. But get this, during the battle, some of the Muslims had seized some of the Jewish holy scriptures. These Jewish tribes, they went back to the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, after everything that they had done and they asked for their scriptures back. And the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, gave those scriptures back to them. Why did they ask him? Weren't they scared of him? Weren't they terrified he was going to kill them? <laughs> no, they weren't because they knew he wasn't out to kill them. They knew that he was just ensuring his own security and the security of his followers with the minimum amount of fighting necessary. Compare that to the carpet bombing and the shock and awe techniques of modern warfare. Isn't this a context that the guest should have mentioned instead of just saying that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, raided a Jewish tribe? The second claim is that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, killed the whole family of the Blessed Lady Safiya. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with her. That's a lie. Only those specific family members died who were treacherous and actively and repeatedly tried to kill the Prophet Muhammad and his followers and they showed every sign, often by their own statements, that they were never going to stop, as I already explained. There were other members of her family who were not killed because they weren't doing these things. And the Lady Sophia, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with her, she relates how she used to keep her family ties. After she became Muslim, she would send these people gifts every week. That was actually one of the wisdoms behind the marriage of the Prophet wasallam to the Lady Sophia. It was a means for him to establish close family ties with the Jewish tribes so that the enmity would disappear and they would live in peace with him and perhaps many of them would also become Muslim. The third issue is that after her whole family was killed, we've already seen that's a lie, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, immediately married her, i.e. while she was weeping with grief, shivering with fear, and completely unwilling. If you look at the facts, all of this is a lie. After the battle was over, all of the women were enslaved. Now, to use the word slavery is not really accurate because the reality of what was happening is very different from what comes to people's minds today. I'm going to make a different response video about that, about another issue that our, our guest mentioned. But for now, let's just move on from this point. And we want to focus on the fact that when the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, realized who she was, he freed her. He freed her and then he gave her a choice. He said, you can either become Muslim and marry me or you can remain Jewish and I'll send you back to your people. And she chose of her own free will, not because she was shivering with fear. She chose out of her own free will to marry the Prophet Muhammad wasallam. In fact, she said to him, I was already a Muslim <laughs> before you even invited me. What's going on? What's going on is that she, in her own words, described how she had heard her father say that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was a genuine messenger. And he was absolutely convinced about that from his character and from the signs that he saw that were confirmed in his scriptures. And she heard him say that he would fight the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, until he breathed his last. So she witnessed this hypocrisy amongst her people. She witnessed their treachery. And she saw a dream shortly before this, in which, which was interpreted by her husband, and she understood it too, that she was going to marry the Prophet And he slapped her, and the bruise was still on her face when she was describing this to the Prophet Muhammad. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, she longed 
to marry him. Unlike many of her closest relatives, she was a woman of high moral character and she recognized the bad character of the people around her and she recognized that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was genuine and she also recognized that when he was offering to marry her, he was honoring her. He was honoring the daughter of the man who was his sworn enemy. He wasn't humiliating her. He, he was marrying her so that the tensions between the Muslims and the Jews would be gone, so that they could be friends, so that they could live in peace, so that many of them could become Muslim. In the description below, you can find scholarly references for everything I've said. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was a noble, kind, gentle, chivalrous man and a genuine messenger from God. And the Lady Safiya, she recognized this. He honored her. He loved her. He would put his knee forth for her to step on as she mounted her, um, her camel. And they had a long, loving relationship together. And that's what I want to talk about next. It's so clear to anyone who knows who the Prophet ﷺ was that allegations such as the one made by the guest are completely and clearly false. They just don't fit with who he was. But the problem is that many of us, we don't know who he was ﷺ. And that's why we created a series called Discover the Prophet ﷺ, which is meant to be a positive response to allegations like this so that we can all see intuitively, immediately, that this is just wrong. That's not who he was. The latest episode just happens to be about the Lady Safiya. May Allah be pleased with her. How the Prophet wasallam loved her, cared for her feelings, consoled her, praised her Jewish lineage, took her side. These are things we need to know. You can click on the right to watch that episode. It gives context and commentary to everything that I've said here. It not only tells you who the Prophet ﷺ was, but it also tells you how his marriage to Safiya was. Click to the right to watch it. And on the left to watch the whole series.